This episode has been brought to you by Squarespace. Hey guys, really quick and useless announcement. I want to let everyone know I am growing a beard right now. I'm at the poverty stages of said beard. I was thinking of starting a YouTube channel for it called Rich's Beard, where we just talk about its favorite music, best workouts, and also its favorite internal combustion engine car. And I will have you know, for the first time here today, the face recognition on my phone didn't know who I was because of all this mange, boys. <laughs> Do I have rabies? I don't know, but I'm looking real feral and homeless. Anyways, Rich, Rich Rebuilds here, and I'm sure you remember my last video where I talked about my Model X, which I labeled the most useless car I have, and I have to say, it drove the Tesla fanboys crazy, which is my number one mission. In the comments section, was angry with people questioning why I would make such a good company look bad, and as you all know, I do love Tesla. I just love poking the fanboys. The funny part is, I was comparing my Model X to my Model S, and I said I prefer the S over the X because I think it's the better Tesla for my needs, but I wouldn't expect the fanboy to understand that. They go haywire when they hear something remotely negative. Even even though it's comparing one Tesla versus another, there were lots of comments saying, if it's so useless, then give it to me. Thanks, but useless does not mean valueless. Now, in the last video, I went over a few things like range comparison between my X and my S. The Falcon Wing door is not playing nice in the winter time. The fact that the Wizards of Winter Song even exists and that stupid dance the X does, I hate that storage space between the two cars and home charging speeds. Now I got what I thought was a great deal on the Model X, but it was so cheap because it was out of warranty. That's right, it only has the motor and battery warranty left, so everything else falls into my own lap. So the scary part is that the prices of used Tesla Model S's are dipping into the low 20s. Now that's Toyota Corolla money. The difference is that Toyota doesn't charge you $200 an hour for labor like Tesla does. So I took the jump anyways. I got a Tesla Model X for what I considered a good deal, but there's no need for a warranty because EVs don't need maintenance, right? As many have pointed out, that's not true. People say they don't need brakes, and while that might be true in areas that don't snow, here in the Northeast, they can literally disintegrate due to road stop and actually due to lack of use as well. Thankfully, we have a solution for that in this video. In my last video, this Model X, I took it to the Electrified Garage to take a look at it, and we actually did a few things. One, there was a blue wet spot underneath the battery, meaning there was a coolant leak on the connector, so the battery has to come out in order to solve that. The car's making a huge squawking noise, which was due to a faulty control arm. Not only that, but mice made a hotel under the front motor and started eating the air filter, so we have to resolve that as well. So today, we're gonna fix all these issues with the most useless car I have, but never fear, I'm sure my next car, which will be powered by gas, will be far worse. And I don't mean to be a Falcon repeatedly whacking into a window, but walking around this Model X, one of the main things one should always was check are the absolutely impeccable seams that come with the very special engineering that went into the doors named after a bird. I like them so much. I want to build a web page around it. Making this page is more simple than opening a Model X for your door because I just use Squarespace. Yes, they rock the on-one platform to build a professional website, online store, or portfolio. It's a great tool to help me convey the point that everyone already knows. The Falcon Wing doors work like a bird that drank from a puddle of whiskey. It's easy to claim or domain or URL, like www.modelx have panel gaps comparable to Kendall Jenner's thigh gaps, or the Falcon Wing Doors work 5.24, a bunch of random numbers per of the time. You can create a custom site that matches your style. Check these page templates out because they'll make your web page look better than Model 3 ever could in my book. In my humble opinion, head over to www.squarespace.com slash rich rebuild to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the code in the description box below. Thank you, Squarespace for sponsoring this rant on bird wings. Let's head over to the Electrified Garage to figure out everything wrong with this car and fix it. Okay, so before we can even pull it in the car, we have to power it down and disconnect the 12 volt. Ah, right, because we're just pulling the battery. Down, the cool pumps go wild and start squirting cooling everywhere. Oh, that's no, oh, I've been there. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I've have. been there, man. All right, you let me know and I'll kill it. So how do you disconnect the 12 volt without taking everything apart? Cut the fireman's loop. I'm just kidding, that's a joke. <laughs> so there's two possibilities. Right. Okay, so your 12 volt's here. Mm -hmm. You have your junction box here, which is, that's your B plus right there from the battery, okay? So you have that off. And then you come over here. That's your ground wire from the battery. So you can actually disconnect that. Oh, that's the main ground of the main whole ground. chassis. Right, that's the chassis ground for the, the 12 volt. Okay. So you can do is shut it down and then just take that ground chassis out, uh, chassis ground off, wrap a rag around it. And you make sure it doesn't touch. Yeah, make right. sure it doesn't touch. Get to you go. have to take this whole thing apart. Genius, Chad, jeez. Well, actually we do anyways, because the filter, because the rat filter. Yeah, 
Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but just in case we didn't have to, that, that's yeah. fantastic. You yeah. need the rat yeah. home. Exactly. There's probably more rats in here. There's probably a rat in here somewhere. Why not? That's a nice comfy blanket. Yeah, I know, right? They could be no, naked, I'd naked. set the chair up in here and just... <laughs> have a little, it's probably nice and warm up here, too, with the front motor. <laughs> That's why they do that. Nice right. And nice and warm. I hope not either. Didn't Chris say he had another one? Yeah, he got another one, but it doesn't have a plastic housing. Oh, it's, it's just the it's, element. Ah, I gotcha. Hopefully the mice enjoy eating the new one less. <laughs> Since we have another filter, let's just let's go for it. Uh, yeah, so there's a little glued. bit of, there's a little adhesive in there. She is glued, but not. Why would they glue it? Why would they glue a filter? Because they wanted to replace it the whole assembly. They don't sell this as a in, in by itself? Nope. They just sell the whole thing. Whole thing. It doesn't make any sense. It's a filter. That's the that's the most expensive rat house you've ever seen. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> that's someone's mortgage. <laughs> that's all the bucks. Jeez, that's like a that's a, that's a stimulus check right there. <laughs> what else has to come out of here to do it, Chad? Is that really it? Uh, well, no, for the uh, for the rapid mate. We can get most of it from down below. Okay. Uh, we need to get access to the coolant tank because we're going to lose some coolant. Okay. But everything else will be down there once we take the battery out. It's legitimately three 10 millimeter bolts and two clamps to get that out. That's it? Okay. I have done one mm -hmm. on a Model S, two wheel drive, without taking the battery out. Well, because there's so much that's so easy to do. There's no front motor. Oh, yeah, it's easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's easy. It's in the wonderful spot in the corner where you can't push down the spring loaded doohickey with the uh, battery. Ah, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I had to do it because uh, it sprung a leak in the mm -hmm. shop. Yeah. And it was a waiter. Oh, and the guys we had like time to drop the battery out, and it was it was squirting pretty good. So we ended up, uh, you know, I, I drew the short straw and I had to climb in the front tub and did some acrobatics. Gosh, to man! Oh, Chad. <laughs> Oh no, I don't like hard work, you know that. Wait until you take these off. The wheels? <laughs> they're heavy. Oh, they're, oh, an axe, oh my god, yeah, I know they're heavy. Uh, do you have a little piece to pop out the plastic uh, clips? Of course. Thank you, Chad. Sure. Chad, what are you using for a tool, Chad? I believe it's a Milwaukee. Oh, no coincidence. Oh. How fast he is. He's, he's done for. Kind of like Groundhog Day. You know? and, and he's wearing ear protection, too. I have oh, to. Chad. It's magic time. <laughs> Yeah, that sound, the sound of success. There you go. That's a New England battery right there. <laughs> I, like, I like the mud that slip taped on the corner of the battery over here. <laughs> You know what, these, sh these cars are pretty green because that's composting right there, see? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, how, so these are where the, the mice were living. What is, is that just um, foam insulation? Yeah. Why would they have that there? That, that's weird. That does seem odd, right? Yeah. It might have seeped out when they injected it in the inside. Yeah. Some leaves. Some leaves, some coolant that's still dribbling. Yeah. Some, uh, yeah, some of the leftover the, condo. Stuff. Yep. The rat condo. This one doesn't seem too bad at all. Yeah, it's dribbling. But, I mean, they all dribble when you take them out. Right. But yours was leaking pretty good that day. Yeah, it's no. Really weird. It shouldn't leak. So yeah, I think replacements is uh, Oh, yeah. there you go. Yep. Yeah. And there's no there's no cool pressure right now. Everything's shut down and that's just pure gravity that's dripping. Yeah. So you put a little pressure on that, that'll leak like crazy. crazy. You know, while we're here, why not just swap in a hundred battery and call it a day? <laughs> I know a guy that could do that. 
So this is a multi, multi part. We're doing a rapid mate and we're doing two control arms at the same time. So the parts man cometh. Yes. The parts man cometh. That's all right. We probably have to return it all anyways. It's probably all the wrong. It's probably all the wrong parts. Like, oh, cool. It was for a what, model. What part number? It was for a model three. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> it's a big model three. Looks, like we're, why? looks yeah. like we're going to make it work. What do you mean it's not a roadster? <laughs> <laughs> It's funny, I remember I did one, of, I did two of these, actually three of these. Um, the car, original car was leaking. Mm -hmm. I pulled it off a salvage car. The salvage one was leaking too. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> that oh, was, that's uh, a swift change. That was fine, oh boy. Ah, that's that was awful. good. So far, so good. See, not bad, huh? Chad? So far, so far. You were worried about me. <laughs> well, not to say you shouldn't be, but you should. You should be concerned. Yeah. That pad's kind of. The, the pad's stuck in there. That one's loose. That one's thick. Wow. So, Look at this thing, huh? They're not that old, but again, they're metal. And right. See, the back's all rusted. It's and starting stuff. to corrode and, and and plug up with crap. This debris in here. Yeah. Is usually from like rust. Build up on here when you drive, it's eight scrapes the rust and it fills up the, the vent port. This stuff is usually what I would clean out during annual services if, if you had vent ports in it, right? And uh, cleaning up the pads and moving the sides. But again, this is a metal metal backard, so this is going to rust unless you have some, something on there to coat it to prevent it from rusting. These are galvanized, okay, metal brake pads, and then they have a mechanical binding surface, option for right. a surface for these. Um, it's kind of like Velcro. What they do is they mechanically grind this into the pad so that this is actually really sharp and curled. A lot of brake pads, the pad is glued to the backer. Ah. What these guys do is they actually, this is oh, this brake pad material. Pads. Yeah, there's an old pad here. So these are glued to the thing? Correct. So this is actually bonded to the metal backer by like a glue or adhesive or something along those lines. I gotcha. Uh, on EVs. These don't get up to operating temperature like a, a normal brake pad. Because you use the brakes a lot, the brake pad would heat up and then that would in turn boil the moisture off and they'll help prevent corrosion and rust and all that that's happening to these right now. The moisture sits in there. When it sits in there, it's <laughs> And then this happens, right? right? Yeah. So these these came out of a car and we legitimately had to like chisel the brake pads out worse than yours. This is from Waka Maintenance. This is about a, uh, about 100,000 miles on these. And this was stuck in the caliper more than the brake pad itself it was. Okay. So it's it's, you know, heavily heavily corroding because of the, you know, all the moisture build up in there so that's the thing so when they say evs don't need maintenance you don't need brakes actually you kind of do because yeah. uh these were probably causing a mild range drop because you know yeah, they, they like drop, mine work. lack of braking power problem with these is like they're regular car brakes they're mm -hmm. not meant for evs because right. evs they don't really use the brakes that often right this company came out and is making a brake pad just for ev so this brake pad the material here is not bonded together it's compressed it's compressed so tightly together that it actually makes the pad when they make this pad it make they make it on the backing plate so it's a mechanical binding between material and the backing plate as opposed to glue as for yeah exactly it's glue now the problem is the glue will break down now, it's not really doing so much in, in this set mm -hmm. but anybody that's taken apart an early model s that has two calipers the the parking brake and the regular ser service brake all right like mine yeah like yours that brake pad has been known to fall off this pad material will actually fall off the backing plate and legitimately just slide off oh, the right. plate and the reason for that is because the moisture is built up in there and it breaks down the glue. And it separates the two it surfaces. Separates I gotcha. Okay. So that can happen to these, but these actually get used more than the parking brake. So that's mm -hmm. why it happens to the parking brake more often. The material that they're using is actually pretty aggressive. So it's a little bit, it's better. They make it to OEM spec or mm -hmm. better. Okay. So these are actually a, oh, like a one up from a stock pad. So pad. this is a stock pad mm -hmm. with around 3,000 miles on it. Okay, the Tesla pad, right? Tesla pad, okay. only Tesla pad. It's actually made by Brembo. And you can see where it's starting to rust around the shim. That's 3,000 miles? 3,000 miles. And it's starting to rust on the sides. Here's the NRS brake pad. Is there? I think there's 10,000 on this. 
Yeah. Yes, there is. There's 10,000. 10, 10, yeah. Like, this isn't bad, but like if it's showing signs of 3,000 miles already, yeah. and this is like, it looks, and this is three times the mileage, that's pretty impressive. Right. That's pretty cool. And not only that, but look at the wear on it. Right. 3,000 versus 10,000. All right, let's throw it on my car then. I need it on my car, Chad. Yes, you do. Okay. <laughs> oh, we got a nice big screen going there. Yeah, too. I mean, I can, even do, I can even do full screen. So this is the way I used to do it at mm -hmm. the service center. Is like I had the, the mechanics wire built in so I can, you know, twist it, twist and form it, it, form it yeah. and I'd legitimately snake it in the frame so you can see it and then have my laptop under the battery table and so run the lift. Yeah. For, and remotely move the battery and I can still see what's going on in the back. All oh, the nice. That's why I like the setup. Well, the trick is to get your camera in a good spot. Yep. That's not going to be pinned by the battery once the battery goes in. Oh, yeah, I've Better been there, finger. man. Yep. Perfect. And get it stuck right there with it where it connects. <laughs> yep. Well, the problem is, but there's two connectors, and this this is the one that screwed me last time, where that kind of went in a little sideways. Yeah. But luckily for us, we didn't. We're not putting a new battery in there. Yeah, That's so, what I did, and that gets all kinds of messed up. Right. Because all the fittings are a little bit different from battery mm -hmm. battery. But if you do it right, you should be able to see both connectors. Ah, right. Now we're talking. See, there's the pin for the other one. Yeah, we can see that. that. Right. So with that sitting there, I should be able to judge how close it is. And I should still be able to recover my camera once the battery goes in. Nice. <laughs> That's just the important part. You know what I love about this? I love, what, remember back in the day when Tesla had that time where they refilled an Audi and they also did a Tesla battery swap and they saw <laughs> it and they noticed that the Tesla battery swap was faster than the Audi. Yep. yep. And it's just like, how are they? How is that ever going to be a thing? This is like this. This needs human intervention. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Because even even with this, we still have to use this method because this battery didn't even move, and we still have to do this. Yeah. So, like, so you mean to tell me you reflash the software? You swap yeah, the battery. Exactly. Reflash the software in three minutes. That's amazing. Yeah. How did you do that? In theory, it makes it made sense at the time. Right. You can make the battery swappable, hot swappable. Yeah. You know, if you preset the firmware, like if they had some way of like getting the ID out of the car remotely. And then when you got in there, the, the firmware was already flashed in the battery. So all I had to do is be plugged in, that right. type of thing. I get that, right. but it's not, it's not practical. The supercharger is way more practical. There we go. Nice. So both in line. So you're gonna eyeball this one and you're gonna remotely look at the other one. Yep, I so gotcha. I, can see the, I can see what I'm doing with the lift right. and how it's going on the sides. But so long as those pins don't get bound up or right. on the wrong hole, we're, we're good. Oh, look at that. It's gonna make contact soon. Oh. What are you thinking, Chad? Ooh. What was that? Oh. So we're lined up in the pins right now in the high voltage. So I want to pull that camera out and go in this way. And, just and make sure where the pins at the plastic. Exactly. Yeah. That's, what, that's what did me in last time. You broke it. Yeah, I crushed it. Oh. But then I fixed it. This. Oh, it's starting to rub. The plastic tub. When the plastic tub was installed. Yeah. This would be pushing on this and pinching off the hose. Ah, so I wouldn't get as much uh, pressure flow. The flow, yeah. This was a problem um, with, with the Model X. It's, it's, it's funny. It's not something you wouldn't even think about. Right. But this is on top. The tub will pinch this off and you'll have nothing Well, the tub's to heavy and it's bolted down. Right. So, of course, it's going to. Gonna... Plus, the heavy duty cable right here to pinch it back this way. See this little fitting? This was a recall. There used to be a one-way check valve in here, but the problem was it wasn't allowing volume. Mm -hmm. So they took it out and they just put this, this uh, coupler in. And when you did that, you're supposed to check for this to see if it was pinched or not. Because the proper routing is supposed to be this way. Underneath it. Ah, underneath, that makes sense. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Okay. When it's on top, the tub will pinch it and you won't get any volume through it. Look at this beautiful blue, look at that, like maracas. Morocco. Look at that beautiful blue air filter that I don't think anyone else in the world has for a Model X right now. Look at this. No, they don't. It matches no. the car. This is the one of one. Prototype. It's a prototype. And if you want one, we can't sell you one. So just enjoy it for what it is in this video. If you want to see it again, rewind it. Play the video again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this if, is, enough, if enough people are interested, we might make this. Tesla gives you the entire thing. Uh, and they throw this old one away, making it less green for the environment, but we replace the filters because we believe in a green future, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> That's funny. Well, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let's give everyone the price breakdown they've been waiting for. The brakes, parts, labor were about $550. The filter was a prototype, so that was free. The lower control arms were the most expensive part of the repair. They were $250 each from Tesla. And to do them, it's easier if you remove the battery. So we rolled the rapid mate and the battery removal into the same labor charge, obviously. We did an alignment as well as removing the control arms. We did a coolant refill and bleed. The total cost with all labor and parts included came to about $1,800 which may seem high to some, and yes, it's very high, but we're talking about a car that was originally over $100,000, and it was the first service I received since I got it a year ago used. I hope this helps everyone. Check out the Electrified Garage on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram. Drop us an email with any questions you may have, info at electrifiedgarage.com, and I will see you all soon with the CyberQuad update.